Welcome to Talk Law Radio with attorney Todd Marquardt of the Marquardt Law Firm at MarquardtLawFirm.com. Welcome back to Talk Law Radio here on 9.30 a.m. The Answer. Uh, we're talking with uh, Mariah, who ha- has a business called Empowered Birth and Pregnancy, LLC. And she was talking to us about the, the mindset and uh, the, the way bodies have uh, fascia and how to put those two things together for a, a better birthing experience. And uh, now I, I want to ask you, uh, Mariah, about the article that was talking about uh, pregnancy and life support. So uh, just for the listeners, I have to bring them uh, up to speed. There was a, a court case uh, in the mid-2000s, I think it was around 2014, where a, um, a woman who happened to be pregnant had a stroke or something, and uh, ended up in the hospital, and she was uh, brain dead, so to speak, and there was a law, that a Texas law, that said that uh, life support could not be removed uh, from a person who was pregnant. So as a, a labor and delivery nurse, um, how does that strike you? Yeah, um, like I, I was, I was reading the article with um, uh, other colleagues, and they themselves had never came across this, and it did sound like in the article that neither had a lot of other people because this was a very unique situation. And we understand the idea of viability and um, viability of the baby, meaning the the baby's healthy enough and and grown enough to live outside the womb, right? Yes. And our weeks of gestation would consider viability after 24 weeks. This patient, she was 14 weeks when this occurred. Mm -hmm. So initially, we were all in agreement that, that that should not have been the reason to keep the life support going because of how early she was gestationally. Well, the Uh, statute doesn't even mention viability. I mean, if, if you, if you just follow the statute, which is section 166.049 of the Texas health and safety code, it says a a person is prohibited from withdrawing or withholding life sustaining treatment from a pregnant patient. And so if, if the pregnant, if she's six weeks pregnant, you know, I, I guess the statute would, would, uh, prevent somebody from, uh, withdrawing life support. Um, but in that court case, they did mention, uh, the, the viability of the baby. Yes. And they, and the other instance was she was declared brain dead, which means she's declared dead not alive. And, and so I could see that, I could see that very clearly. She's, she's been declared dead already. And I think that's where that became so different or, or such the difficult, um, the difficult of, of deciding whether to keep life support or not keep life support because they were saying she's declared dead. And they're just keeping her body alive. And, and that's so, why the court ultimately uh, decided that the, the husband could uh, ask for the treatment to be withdrawn. But, but her body was alive. And I don't, I don't think that there's any statute that says that if your brain is dead, that you're dead. That was, um, that was what, when they said it, when a medical professional declared the person dead, which was brain dead. Mm-hmm. Okay. So if she was declared brain dead. That means dead. Right. And so that was the, that was the struggle, the struggle to say, well, you know, we, but we have these means to keep the body pumping and mm-hmm. heart, you know, so, but they were like, but she was, because when you declare somebody dead, even if it's brain dead, 
all life support's coming off. Right. So that was, and that was her wishes. She had a legal document. Her advanced directives mm -hmm. said, I do not want advanced life support in the event that I can't sustain life. But as I was talking amongst my colleagues too, we make these advanced directives not with the idea that there is a baby inside of us. Right. So had she made a clause in her own advanced directive, I think that needs to be addressed in advanced directives for women of childbearing age to really right. think about that because who thinks about that? All you're thinking about is I don't want to have all this life support if I'm really just not going to have a good quality of life. Right. That's that's why we're making those. We're not thinking about anything else except us. And it was about honoring her wishes. Um, but I've done an advanced directive and that was and I was childbearing age. And that was not a and I was in San Antonio, let's yeah. say that. But it was before right. 2000. Um, but that was something that I said, you know, making an advanced directive and reading this article, that might be a question that needs to be brought up. Have yeah, you considered sure. this this scene? What would you want to do? And but, then they got it with their spouses or whoever. Yeah, but there's a whole lot of other medical uh, things that could go wrong where somebody would end up in a coma or a vegetative state and, and happen to be pregnant and, and not brain dead. So uh, I think that we should talk more about this statute because uh, pregnant ladies under this statute are not allowed to decide to take life support off. And, and it's, it's just a really strange thing to me that, that you don't, you can't make that decision. And I know the state of Texas would say, well, the state has an interest in, in protecting and preserving life, the baby's life. So there, there's two well, sides. I, also, I do think as much as there is two sides, I, I, I think the question needs to be asked as um, having your wishes played out but what if you are pregnant and something happens to you women may have a different answer mm -hmm. and some may not right but some like literally when you're thinking about that you are not thinking that you're pregnant you're thinking that it is just you right and you want that but you have to raise this awareness that don't forget you're of childbearing age what would you want for yourself? And that would be, I would have to imagine like a question posed to get a real, a real consensus of like how many women would say, well, actually, if I was pregnant, maybe I would want to be kept alive. Mm -hmm. And that, if you're not asking that question, then we're not getting those answers. And then we're not getting, you know, because the, you know, I would imagine the law was made to support people's rights and things like yeah. that. Right. So, so what, what would I think as, uh, I would want to have that question with my spouse. I would say, Hey, if something happened to me, because for me, if I, if I passed away somehow, some way, uh, you know, I'm in heaven, I'm okay. Mm -hmm. But what's going on down on earth? Right. I would ask my husband, what, what would you like me to do? Would you want my, would you want the baby? Would you want that piece of me? Because as a woman, when she loses her, her spouse or partner or father of her child, let's just say that, that's a very special baby. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, that's that last piece of him that she has, and she gets to make that choice and decision where, where a, a father does not. That's not his body. He doesn't get to um, grow the baby. So that is definitely a question between the couples to say, would you want to go through this? I love it that you're bringing the father into this because uh, my experience at the hospital when my children were born, um, I, I didn't have very much say-so as a father. I was pretty much ignored. 
So I, yeah. I love that you you give some respect to the fathers out there. <laughs> I'll just real quick. Also, I don't just have the birth coaching for mothers. I actually have confident parent program, which is designed for fathers exactly because of what you said. I know the fathers just are, I almost feel like they're just spectators. Right. When they come in with the idea, I'm going to advocate for my wife. We're too medical. We can railroad you real quick with our fancy mm -hmm. medical words and, and convince you that this is what you need to do. And you're, you're a lawyer. You'll be like, well, I, I don't know this medical stuff. Right. So that my, from the way I was treated to how I nurse people is where my coaching comes from. And that's for mother and father. And even a birth professional, I have, uh, my program is, I also have it for them too, because there's, there's a, a need you are not going into that birth alone. Most people deliver their babies in hospitals. So you have nursing staff, obstetrician staff, midwife staff, and it's just you, your wife, maybe a doula. But it's not supposed to be you against them. Mm -hmm. You need to be talked to. You need to be, con your voice matters. And this is what I'm thinking, like if I am gone, it is not about me anymore, right, honestly. Right. This, there's a baby in there that I made with somebody I love, and they may want that baby so bad, and they say, well, no, because she made this advanced directive, and it'd be like, but we didn't talk about pregnancy. Right. So this becomes a very important topic to bring into an advanced directive from a woman's side. You have to talk about it. It's awkward. It's weird. But... If that situation arise, me personally, this is Mariah Dyfi. If my husband said to me, please stay alive so I could have our baby, I would say do it. Awesome. That would be we just have a minute left, so I want to talk about your legacy. Just a second. And now it's time for the Talk Law Radio Legacy Spotlight. What's your legacy? Sponsored by Marquardt Law Firm. So, Mariah, in just one minute, Tell us what you want your legacy to be. I want my legacy to um, change how birth is globally, how women are made to feel. I want them to feel empowered. I want them to feel joy. I don't want them to fear birth. I want their husbands or partners to feel that experience with them because I feel we have a very broken society and this is where it starts. It starts at birth. Awesome. And if you feel that, it's going to go into your parenthood, and those children will grow up as, as healthy as, as they can be. I had so much fun getting to know you. Uh, I'm going to have to have you back on the show because we didn't get through everything that I wanted to talk about. <laughs> so um, you've heard it here on Talk Law Radio. Talk to you later. This has been Talk Law Radio with attorney Todd Marquardt, brought to you by the Marquardt Law Firm. You can learn more at MarquardtLawFirm.com. And be sure to listen to the full Talk Law Radio show Saturday mornings at 11 on 930 AM, The Answer. Each week, attorney Todd Marquardt talks about the law. His mission with the Talk Law Radio Show and Podcast is to help you discover your legal issue blind spots. In the beginning, God had one law. Don't eat from the fruit of that tree. Then came the Ten Commandments. Now we have federal, state, and municipal lawmakers that won't stop creating new laws. Laws that might impact you without you knowing it. Listen to the show and drop a line on Facebook or email host at talklawradio.com and let the host know what you think of the show, the topics you want to hear, and whether you want to be a guest.